An eight second video has the city of Denver sending a letter to ICE asking them to stick to their own rules. Our Chris Vanderveen is sick of asking for interviews. Instead, he's issuing a challenge. We throw it back to the original opening day at Coors Field, the one that didn't count toward the Rockies record. And we see how one part of the city has changed from a business owner about to close his doors after 55 years. This is next. The city of Denver is telling ICE to cool it. The city wants ICE agents to stop going after immigrants in the courthouse, telling us domestic violence victims are starting to refuse to testify out of fear of being deported. And the city wants ICE to avoid sensitive areas like schools, where one incident was recently caught on camera. The video is only eight seconds. It shows ICE agents at 48th and Race, which is near the Purina plant off I-70. A 58-year-old man from Mexico was arrested, but what bothers the city about this video is that arrest took place near a school during morning drop-off. It created a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, a lot of disruption, and obviously to the point that the principal reached out to every member of the city council and the mayor to express their concerns. Mayor Michael Hancock, city council, and the DPS superintendent signed this letter the city just sent to ICE, reminding the agency about not conducting enforcement in sensitive locations. ICE defines sensitive locations as churches, synagogues, and mosques, hospitals, schools, daycares, and school bus stops. It does not include the inside of courthouses, where the city also wants ICE agents to stay away. Are you coming here to make an arrest? ICE tells us sometimes agents are inside the courthouse when they've exhausted other options. We're not trying to shield violent offenders here. We've already had domestic violence victims who have contacted us uh, in pending cases and let us know they were unwilling to continue with those cases and testify in court for fear of deportation. When that happens, the city dismisses any charges. Now, we asked ICE a number of questions today. A spokesman said he was not authorized to answer any questions about the incident near the school. He said ICE would respond to the letter directly to the mayor. Senator Michael Bennett was in a tough spot. He spent weeks praising Judge Neil Gorsuch, saying he was proud of him. But today, we learned he'll vote no on his confirmation. Bennett was the last senator to reveal how he'll vote. And he told NBC's Chuck Todd he worries about how polarized this whole debate over the court has become. You don't need the other party to do something. The pressure on your party to pick the most extreme person or have the most extreme legislation becomes uh, routine. And what I, what you, you, you know, a lot of the criticism of Judge Gorsuch was about how he was attempting to obscure his conservative credentials. That's not what you're going to see in the future. What you're going to see in the future is people saying, I will, I'm the most conservative judge there is in America, put me on the court. Or people saying, that's the most liberal judge in America, put me on the court. And I don't think that's going to be good for the courts. Now, with the so-called nuclear option, all presidential nominees will have an easier path to confirmation in the Senate. Gorsuch's confirmation vote is expected tomorrow. About a half hour ago, we sent this email to large medical providers in Colorado, issuing them a challenge. They apparently don't want to talk to us on camera about the hundreds of bills we've received through our year-long Show Us Your Bills campaign. So we've decided to invite them to come here to Nine News to see directly with their own eyes what we've been reporting on for months. All we did was ask, and all you did was say, okay. To date, hundreds of you have uploaded and shared your stories and bills and general tales. The system is broken. Tales of financial woe. We have $4,000 in facility charges. You have no idea what you're being charged. They just were very evasive and wouldn't tell me. It kind of feels like highway robbery, to be honest. You're mad. I want somebody who can give us a consistent answer. We get it. And I'm not a millionaire. I can't afford this. You don't know what's coming. You don't know who's billing. You don't know what the amounts are. For two months, we sent our cameras into your homes and businesses and simply listen. Uh, famotidine something, injection. I definitely didn't get that. Now we want answers as well. Problem is, our emails asking hospitals for on-camera interviews have resulted in emails and no on-camera interviews. Seems no hospital wants to talk to us. Explain on camera why they bill the way they do. Uh, $6,790.25. Explain Todd's bills to us. Explain Bob's and Ryan's and Ares's and Julie's and Rick's and Anthony's and Melissa's and his and hers and theirs. Explain medical billing in general and do it here. Here, 
at 9 News, Monday, April 10th, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. We just emailed you the address. There's no excuses. You can come here and tell us whatever you want. Tell us why you build the way you do. Tell us we're wrong. Heck, even tell us it's complicated. Right now, I'm being asked to pay $2,495. For a half hour visit? What do you think of that? Um, I think I'm in the wrong industry. We've heard from far too many people to let this one go. I'm not, I can't, I can't do it. All of this simply because we asked. Simply because you answered. Thousands out of pocket for three hours. Holy cow, did you answer. This apparently isn't just an occasional deal. It is not. So there's one more thing we should say. Should the hospitals decide they're not going to come to us, we're now putting it on the record that we just might reserve the right to go to them with a camera. Uninvited, of course, but we simply believe if you're going to routinely leave patients with bills nearing $5,000, sometimes you ought to be brave enough to defend those bills. And of course, we are all still encouraging people to send us more bills at showusyourbills at 9news.com. We have been inundated, but we're always welcome to hear we'll see more. So instead of rushing them with the camera right away, the thing is, come in, take a look at everything, and then maybe... Why can't you defend your billing practices? Think about all the people that you know in your life who've been billed by hospitals, and they're sort of confused by the billing practices. Here's your chance. Come to 9 News. Explain your billing practices. We're more than happy to listen. All right. Chris Vanderveen, we'll see if they show up. Thanks yeah. so much. Boy, did we get some spicy comments about our story on library books last night. The viewer who sent us the photo spotted the library books in a recycling dumpster outside Westwoods Elementary School in Arvada. So many of you wondered why the district didn't donate them. Jeffco Public Schools told us books that are discarded like that generally have something wrong with them. They're either outdated or they have outdated information, or some of them have physical damage that's beyond repair. The district does offer unwanted books that are in good condition, first to the other schools, then to families in the school system. Just wanted to get that all out there. Our Verify team dug into an interesting question that came from a viewer named Jay. Jay sent us a string of emails between himself and his state representative, Democrat Mike Foote, a back and forth on what's cheaper, green energy or good old fashioned fossil fuels. In the email, Foote told Jay that Excel Energy just comes out and says wind and solar are cheaper than fossil fuels. Our Brandon Ritterman set out to verify, are wind and solar really the cheapest? Up north of Denver, you'll find the Cherokee Power Plant. Originally built to burn coal, it's converting right now to natural gas. It's an important part of where our power comes from around Denver, but it's not the most important part. We've had days where two-thirds of the energy that has been consumed uh, inside of an hour has been from the wind that we have on our system. We took Jay's question right to the source. I'm Alice Jackson. I work for Excel Energy. My title is Vice President of Strategic Initiatives. So this question about what energy costs what is right in your wheelhouse? Yes, sir, it is. We pulled out Jay's email chain. Uh, Excel has come out and said it that wind and solar costs are lower than traditional fossil fuel energy. What's the deal? Well, I would completely agree with you on the wind side. As far as solar goes, it's really borderline right now, and it depends on the resource and where it's located. Jackson says new wind turbines and solar panels keep getting cheaper and put out more power. A wind turbine that we bought back 10 years ago doesn't produce nearly as much when the same speed of wind blows as the new ones today. That shows when you look at the most recent data on what it actually costs for XL to bring you different kinds of energy in Colorado. In 2015, wind became the cheapest at four and a half cents per kilowatt hour. With coal and hydroelectric close behind, natural gas is a little more and solar a little more still. Now, this shows us the cost of what Colorado Colorado's already built. New big solar farms can make power for about four cents, and Excel figures power will only cost 2.8 cents at the new Rush Creek wind farm it's building. But there's a caveat Excel gets federal subsidies that make the wind and solar cheaper. Take away all the subsidies. Mm -hmm. Is the picture the same, or at that point, is fossil fuel you know, much cheaper? 
than wind and solar. Well, it's not a lot cheaper, but it's pretty close. Uh, so when you look at it, wind really is in the hunt in, uh, without the production tax credit. That's she says we're at that turning point for wind now. Solar is going to take a little longer in Colorado, but forecasts predict the day is coming when solar will be cheaper than burning fossil fuels here. Are you going to build a fossil fuel plant in Colorado ever again? Yes, but not as we have done in the past. XL still needs natural gas plants, just not the old kind that hum away all day. The sun can be dimmed by clouds, the wind can stop blowing, and when that happens, they need what's called a compression turbine, a plant that can fire up at a moment's notice and make power out of natural gas, then shut down quickly when the wind or the sun comes back. To be cheesy and steal from the politicians, it is the all of the above energy approach, kind of? Absolutely, and that's what we're looking at. With one exception. No coal. XL is not even considering building a coal plant here ever again. And quite frankly, we don't think we could get one permitted even if we wanted to do one. Yeah. Uh, so we are not looking. Even in the new administration? <laughs> we agree. They're undoing the war on coal, I thought. <laughs> even if they got rid of any of the restrictions on coal plants, you guys probably still wouldn't do it? Is that what I'm hearing? We would not. Coal plants last for 50 years, and who knows what the price of coal will be in a decade. The cost of fuel is uncertain, but the wind and the sun show up for free. Bottom line, it's a little more complicated than what the lawmaker told Jay, but Excel says his overall point is correct. Right now, we are at the tipping point where wind is cheaper than fossil fuel, even without government subsidies. And solar isn't very far behind. For next, I'm Brandon Ritterman. The most Colorado thing we saw today happened in Boulder, where a lot of Colorado things happen. This park is stupendous. That cute kid is probably in his 20s now. We take a step back in time this Throwback Thursday to the first opening day at Coors Field. They were wearing coats. I hear Kathy Saban says you can leave yours at home tomorrow. The most Colorado thing we saw today Boulder County wants to encourage more bicycling. So they are providing free bike racks to all businesses in the county. They're even offering to install them for free. The idea is once people see more bike racks, they'll be encouraged to use a bike and not a car to get around. Members of the public are also allowed to suggest locations for bike racks. The city of Denver has a similar program. And that, my friends, is the most Colorado thing we saw today. That's such a great idea, Steve, but those of us that ride horses would like to see more hitching posts, perhaps, as we're out and about in Boulder on our four-legged critters. And what a great day to be outdoors in Colorado. It's going to feel like summer heading into the weekend. Our high temperature today above average in the mid-60s. We'll see this number increase by 5 or 10 degrees tomorrow, just in time for the boys of summer to come home for opening day for spring baseball day tomorrow. And really, it's just going to be spectacular. As we take a look at the forecast, we are tracking another storm system, which is approaching from the west. Not much happening with us tomorrow, but the high and mid-level clouds coming in from the west will be increasing during the day, leading to a chance of snow in the high country, but that won't happen until Saturday night. Here along the front range is dry until Monday, and temperatures are soaring into the 70s. So tonight, partly cloudy, 38 with light winds, a cool night. Temperatures tomorrow above average in the mid-60s, a beautiful day to start, but low 70s by about the time the guys take the field. It's as warm on Saturday, and we have a little bit of rain coming in Sunday into Monday. And while down here it feels like spring, summer-like temperatures, we're all about baseball up in the high country. Some amazing spring skiing conditions at areas like Keystone and A Basin, knee-deep powder up there. Thanks, Kathy. It's Throwback Thursday, and in honor of opening day tomorrow, and much to the dismay of our producing staff here at Next, I spent much of the afternoon in the basement searching for the tape from the first baseball game ever played at Coors Field. History will tell you the first official game was April 26, 1995, but I pulled the tape from March 31st, two days before a resolution in the 1994 baseball strike. It's the day the replacement Rockies took the field, and our old friend Mark Kobrick talked to fans checking out the park for the first time. They came streaming in by the thousands. If you build it, they will come, riding on the shoulders of their fathers, wearing grocery sacks on their heads, others just to entertain. It's time for baseball. How do the taxpayers feel about the new stadium? Most 
were swept away. Oh, I think it's awesome. Hey. I think it's gorgeous. It's just incredible. This park is stupendous. I think it's a beautiful park. I think it's money well spent. It's great. Uh, no matter what's happening with the baseball game, everyone here is making history today. I dropped a couple of peanut shells for the very first time right there. First person ever to do that. Even the tiniest of fans were happy that Denver now has a major league park to match its major league club. Mark Kubrick, 9 News. You thought that was a trip back in time? Let's go way back, a century to be exact, and look at Jeffco's role in World War I. And we get the exit interview with a man in the ear lowering business, how he says Denver has changed since he first picked up a pair of shears 55 years ago. Next. Eddie Lopez has been in business along Santa Fe Drive for 55 years. He's heard, he's heard his share of stories and seen a lot of changes. Photojournalist Chris Hansen talked to Eddie Lopez as he gets ready to close up shop. How you doing, sir? Good, how are you? Pretty good. It hasn't changed much. It's been like this for years and years. Old time barbershop. I'm going to cut it a little short in 1961. December 61. When I started here, the, the name Jigs was here already. Yeah, the the other barbers, I don't know where they got it from. Jigs Barbershop is like, uh, it's been there forever. Jigs was there when we were going to school. And I'm 70. <laughs> we look pretty serious, huh? No, I came from uh, San Luis Valley, and uh, I started working at DU, and then uh, I told my brother that I didn't want to work like that, so I just went to barber school and started from there. How long have you been here? 55 years. Is that right? Yeah. Last days. Last days of barbering. I'm going to retire. Streets, uh, they've changed quite a bit. Now it's uh, like a Cadillac. I mean, it's all prime property. Nothing but art galleries now. And before it was clothing stores, drug stores in the corner, eyeglasses, a lot of that stuff. Who's going to cut your hair when I retire? I'll go get you. <laughs> You'll go get me at home, huh? Yeah. Okay. I say, come on, Ed. Come on, Ed. Let's go to my house and cut my hair. <laughs> Ready for the dance. Ready for the dance. It hasn't changed much. It's been real good to me. <laughs> you know, we always love to meet people in the community and hear great stories. You know how to reach us. Use the hashtag HeyNext or send us an email next at 9news.com. The United States entered World War I 100 years ago today. It joined the Allied forces, Britain, France, and Russia, to take on Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. Two months later, in, the May, in May of 1917, Congress passed the Selective Service Act, which then allowed the president to draft men into the military. That's when a local draft board was created in Jefferson County. The Jefferson County government posted documents from the local draft records on Facebook, a list of names, where they're from, and handwritten notes, all pretty cool. Well, prices are going up around Denver, even for the Tooth Fairy. That is next. It's a sign, a sign of a young deal maker. TJ lost a tooth, and we mean lost it. It came out at school, and it got lost somewhere between there and home. So he wrote a note to the Tooth Fairy explaining his whole situation and asking for 100 bucks or 90 would be fine. The Tooth Fairy brought him five. Nice try, TJ. We appreciate your spirit. Someone emailed and said, is Kyle running for Congress? He only seems to work four days a week. Dude works all the time. I mean, I don't know how much. He, he works like all week, but I'll work on being a little bit better next time.